Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today we're going to take a look at the all-new Raspberry Pi 400 computer kit. I would like to extend a huge thank you to Kinekit for sending this unit to me for review. What exactly is the Raspberry Pi 400? Well, it's basically a combination of the Raspberry Pi 4 keyboard and the Raspberry Pi 4 all combined into a convenient single computer. And the ports are available on the very back of the unit. Let's check it out right now. Let's talk about the features of the Raspberry Pi 400 computer kit. It includes a Broadcom 1.8 GHz 64-bit quad-core ARM version 8 CPU, which is about 15% faster than the Pi 4. It's got the keyboard and the Pi 400 all built into one single assembly. It's got 4 gigs of RAM. It includes a 16 GB microSD card with Pi OS pre-installed. However, in my opinion, you may want to get a larger one, and Kanakit does include multiple options on their website. The kit also includes the official Raspberry Pi mouse, a 3-foot micro HDMI to HDMI cable, two USB 3.0 ports and one USB 2.0 port, gigabit Ethernet, USB-C for the power, the Wi-Fi is a dual band 2.4 GHz and 5.0 GHz, 802.11 BGN and AC. It's got Bluetooth 5.0 and a 40 pin GPIO header. There are a few notable omissions here that you need to be aware of compared to the Raspberry Pi 4. There is no camera port or 3.5 millimeter headphone port. However, you can connect up a USB camera, which I will demonstrate later in this video using Zoom. Let's quickly check out the box for the Raspberry Pi 400. This is the front of the box, and here's one of the sides, and here's the other side, which identifies all the connectors and ports that are available on the Pi 400. Now let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. I think it's an awesome idea that the Raspberry Pi Foundation was able to redesign the Raspberry Pi 4 to fit in this keyboard. That's pretty awesome. It's all built into this single unit. Let's take a look at the ports. You got the GPIO pins on the back. You have your micro SD card slot, your two micro HDMI ports, your USB-C power, as well as your USB 3.0 ports, and you have two of those, and one USB 2.0 and gigabit ethernet. On the far right, you have your Kinesten lot. All right, let's continue with the additional accessories in the box. Let's see, here we have the official Raspberry Pi mouse. This is a fairly decent mouse. I've used it before with the Raspberry Pi 4 desktop kit. And yeah, I mean, it's perfectly functional. It is optical, and yes, it has a roller, and of course your two buttons. A very basic mouse, but works fine. All right, so let's take a look at this. Looks like it's the official USB-C power supply. Go ahead and quickly take a look at it. This is the USB-C in, which goes to the Raspberry Pi, and then here we have a 5.1 volt, 3 amp power supply. And if we look up under here, we'll find the micro HDMI to HDMI cable. This goes to your monitor, which the monitor is about the only thing missing from the kit. And here's the micro SD sleeve and the Raspberry Pi 400 beginner's guide with 247 pages of awesomeness. <laughs> now, seriously, it's a great book. It's a great introduction to anyone who is new to the Raspberry Pi 400 or even the Raspberry Pi 4. Lots of good material on programming and general usage. Definitely want to check that out. Thank you. 
Let's take a quick look at the bottom of the Pi 400. Here you'll notice at the front, plastic feet, and at the back, rubber feet. That'll keep it from sliding around. Now we're going to compare the Pi 400 with the Raspberry Pi keyboard. Guess which one's which? Yep, you can't tell hardly. <laughs> this is the Pi 400 that I'm holding. Here they are in comparison. They look pretty much exactly alike, um, at least in terms of size. Let's go ahead and take a look here. We got 20.6 millimeters for the Pi keyboard and 21.2. So you're looking at roughly 0.6 millimeters. We'll go ahead and pop in the micro SD card. Actually, mine was already installed, but this is where it goes. I just wanted to show that. So we'll just pop it in place and we'll go ahead and plug in the micro HDMI next to the micro SD card. Now we'll plug in the USB mouse. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it into the USB 2.0 port over here on the right. You can plug it into any port, but that's just what I'm going to use. And here's your USB-C power. And notice as soon as you plug it in, you'll notice the green light in the upper right. That's because it's booting up. And when you turn it on for the very first time, it will expand the file system of the micro SD card, which I apologize, I did not capture that here. But eventually it'll boot up. Go ahead and select your country. I'm going to select United States, my time zone, Chicago, and say yes, I'm going to use the English language and the US keyboard. Then I'll click next. Now it's going to ask me to change the password to the Raspberry Pi 400, so I'll type something in and hit next. And it's going to say, check to see if you have a black border, which I do. So I'm going to check the little check mark here and hit next. And then it's going to scan for my Wi-Fi networks. And I'll select mine, which happens to be Lucas. Hit next and enter the passphrase for your wireless network. The update may take roughly around 30 minutes, depending on the number of files it has to download, your speed of your Wi-Fi, your internet, and so forth. So just be a little patient and let the update proceed. It'll download, and then, of course, everything will get installed. You'll see this dialog. System is up to date. Click OK. And then it will prompt you to go ahead and restart your Raspberry Pi 400. So click Restart. And now you'll be back to the Pi OS desktop. We'll just go ahead and look in the upper right here. This is not my public IP. It is behind my firewall, in case you're wondering. I've had some questions on that in the past. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and load up Chromium, which is a web browser. And when it starts off, it's at the Raspberry Pi 400 web page, which is kind of neat. We'll go ahead and open a new tab, and we'll go to www.canakit.com, which is the company that sent this unit. And we'll go ahead and go to the Pi 400. I want to show you a few things here on their website. Basically, we'll scroll down just a little bit. And what you'll see here is that the Pi 400 is only $100 for this kit, which, in my opinion, is a great deal. While not necessary, they do list some additional options. I would recommend a larger capacity disk. You can go with an SSD uh, using the three USB 3.0 adapter if you prefer. Then there's the Kanakit Pi switch and the micro HDMI cable if you want a longer cable as well as the GPIO kit. All right, so now let's do a little bit of testing on YouTube. So I'm going to go to youtube.com, and I'm going to pull up my last video. And this is the actual page load time. I wanted to show you that because I have been doing some video editing here. I want you to see how long it takes, which it's not that long, but you need to see that. And now I've got the video playing, and I'm going to go to the Stats for Nerds so we can see if there are any dropped frames. And as you can see here, we have 35 drop frames, and we are running at 720p. Playback is decent at 720p, but obviously not perfect. Now we're up to 42 drop frames. Now I'm going to right-click on the desktop, go to Desktop Preferences, and I'm going to show you real quick how to change the background picture. I'll select Clouds, and click Open, and then we'll go back in, and we'll change it to Aurora. Click Open, and yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, so next I want to show you a USB webcam hooked up. There's a good chance that you might be interested in using the Pi 400 as a computer for maybe your kids at school or for other purposes. So I'm just going to hook up this webcam and point it at myself. And I do have a Zoom web-based meeting set up here. So we're going to click the Start Video and Allow button. And I didn't have a USB mic to try out here. So anyway, I also didn't have anyone to help me with this video. Everybody was doing homework and stuff. So 
this is just me. Here I am, showing you the opposite end, going to my other computer. And greetings from the other end. Another thing you may find interesting is that LibreOffice is pre-installed. So we're going to go ahead and load up LibreOffice Calc. And this is the actual load time of how long it takes for it to start up, just to give you an idea. It's fairly quick. All right, now I am going to speed through this portion. I'm just going to type in some values and sum them up and change the numbers around. And now I'll demonstrate that you can load up a word processor as well, LibreOffice Writer. Now I'm going to just type something in and resize the font so you can see it a little better. And yeah, got my homework done. <laughs> There's also some games pre-installed, pretty cool stuff. Of course, you can add more if you want. And we're going to go into the Thonny IDE for Python programming and just do a little test here. If you want to add new programs, you can go to the Preferences, Add Remove Software, and select the type of software you want to install and go ahead and install it. For this video, I left the resolution at 720p, but you aren't limited to that. In fact, you can go up to 4K. If you go into the screen configuration here, go to Configure Screens, HDMI, and Resolution, you can set it to whatever resolution you want and that your monitor supports. And here we are at 1080p. The bar you see at the bottom is coming from my video capture card, not the Raspberry Pi 400 or the monitor. Now I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to install RetroPie. Go to raspberrypi.org forward slash software and download Raspberry Pi 4 Imager. Then you want to select RetroPie for the Raspberry Pi 4 and 400. Insert your new micro SD card, which should be empty. Then select the card and click right. After you're sure you have the right card selected, click yes, and it'll burn the image. Once it's done, all you have to do is click continue and remove the micro SD card and insert it into the Raspberry Pi 400. To do that, just simply pop out the old one and pop in the new one. Now we're going to boot up RetroPie. First it's going to expand the file system and then boot directly into RetroPie. Once it does that you'll have to set up your controllers and your Wi-Fi and of course copy your games. I already have some detailed documentation and videos so if you go to wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash rpi4gaming you can go check them out. And one last thing I need to let you know, if you shut down your Raspberry Pi to fully power it off, press Function F10. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy the Raspberry Pi 400. I have definitely enjoyed it since I've had it. It certainly fulfills a need for an inexpensive computer that can do all kinds of things. And it's fairly easy to set up, as you've seen in this video. What do you think about the Raspberry Pi 400? Please comment below and let me know. I'm very interested in hearing your thoughts. Again, I would like to thank Canakit for sending this unit for a review. I'll place links down below where you can pick up your Raspberry Pi 400 computer kit. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you very soon.